Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise you right now, God, as you've given me this download right now for your people. So I want to get on here and give this word of the Lord. Right now I've been um, in worship and prayer. And the Lord has been speaking to me about some things that are going on right now. Um, and right now, even as I'm coming on, he's given me um, some download about um, some certain things that are happening. Um, and so I don't want to lose it right now, but I want to release it to the body of Christ so we don't lose what the Lord is saying um, so like I said, I've been in um, prayer and I've been in worship all day and the Lord has been giving me a lot of heavenly downloads uh, for people and also let me know what's happening in the body of Christ. A lot to do with this coronavirus, of course, um, but some other things that are going on. And so um, I'm just going to speak a little bit about what the, the word of the Lord is coming to me um, through worship and prayer and you know, he gave me some prophetic par parallels off the bat right this morning. As I was turning on my computer, um, God speaks through, you know, parallels, numbers, angels, all kinds of things. Uh, and I turned on my computer and I my um, antivirus for my computer uh, had expired. But this, this system of this antivirus had come in and actually stopped me from getting into my computer... Be, unless I was to push on this thing, which would go actually into my files. And that way, before I could actually access my computer. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, this is exactly what is happening through the media. Uh, that there's a spirit of like fear, but of control. Okay, so like as I couldn't get into my computer, unless I pushed on this antivirus thing and then they wanted to, me to buy uh this certain amount of protection for 1995 a month or whatever and i'm saying like listen how can you even put this in my computer and control my computer from the outside with your little advertisement and if i don't buy this thing then you won't um let me into my computer and the lord gave me a, a vision that the media is doing the same thing to people and especially people that are in the church and there's a spirit of control and people are starting to fall to this idea that I have to be controlled by the government and the media and everything. I'm no more, uh, uh, you know, free in Christ. I'm no more free to do what um, the Lord has called me to do. And so this is what the Lord had already told me a week ago through that prophetic word that this was part of the Antichrist spirit that is behind this coronavirus that is trying to give people to fall into the control of the antichrist spirit and also the antichrist system which is a which is a system of the world and it's a system of satan it's actually of the synagogue of satan and so the lord showed me that that actually this is same system and this same spirit has fallen into the media has fallen into uh the public from this whole coronavirus thing and now it's infiltrating the churches and it's scattering the christians and so now that we can't meet now the government is controlling can you go to church or not can you gather or not this is the spirit of the antichrist and it's the spirit of control it's a luciferian spirit and it's of the synagogue of satan the lord said and so the lord had told me that this this is where he's going to drive us back into his arms okay and this is where he's also it happened in first peter uh, chapter one was back in the time of the early church that the churches were spread abroad they were scattered throughout the the region and the lord showed me that the same is happening now because we don't happen to meet in assemblies now it's because something has happened where god has spread us out but he spread us out for a reason and it was to infiltrate uh, the world with the gospel of the lord jesus christ and so the lord said that many people much of this is happening but if we give in to the fear of the control of the government then we're not going to be proper witnesses for the lord in this time and so we've got to get away from this spirit of control and we've got to kind of more or less the lord said turn off your television get off the media where it's controlling you because of the spirit of antichrist and of the synagogue of satan and the lord said that also uh he showed me revelation and this is where this prophetic word is coming out of um he showed me revelation um 
chapter 2, verse 1, and this is was the church of Ephesus. And the Lord said that this is what is happening in our church. Also, it's all the seven churches. And the Lord said that even these seven churches are prophetic parallels to the seven churches that we have in now. Okay. And much of this is happening to start to bring us in separating the sheep from the goats and who's pure and who's not pure. Who's going to really believe in God? Who's going to really hear his voice? And so the Lord showed me. Ephesus, the church of Ephesus, Revelation 2, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, says the true, uh, says he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, that's Jesus, uh, the glorified, resurrected Jesus Christ, he that uh, holdeth the stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So the stars stand for the the uh, seven angels of the church of the seven churches. The candlesticks are the seven churches. Okay, Ephesus, Pergamos, Smyrna, uh, Sardis, Philadelphia, right? All those uh, Thyatira. These are all the seven churches, which are prophetic parallel to the seven churches that we really, the different denominations that we have. But specifically, he's speaking of this church of Ephesus, uh, verse 2. I know thy works, and this is what he's saying to us too. I know thy works and thy labor. Because God's saying, I see your labor. I've seen that you've uh, not um, given up witnessing for me, right? And thy patience. And he knows our patience, says the Lord, even through this virus, thy patience and how that has not barren them which are evil okay because we know this whole thing there's a lot of evil behind it right and thou has tried them which say that they are apostles and they are not and has found them liars right and has borne and has um patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. So the Lord is saying, I know that you're still laboring, you're still witnessing about me, you're still telling people, you're still laboring, you're still enduring, um, but I have a few things. Nevertheless, I have some things against you because you have left your first love. And so the Lord is saying, many people have left their first love. This was the uh, catalyst, says the Lord, that you were already ready, starting to fall away before this virus happened. And now you've just said, I I'm done. I'm, I I've just given up, Lord. I can't handle it anymore. But the Lord said that I am using this to drive you back into my arms and to bring you back to your first love. And so it is time for you to uh, remember, therefore, verse 5, write this down, Revelation 2 and 5, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Come on, some people have fallen away from grace, the Lord said. Remember from where you are fallen and repent, listen, uh, and do thy first works, else I will come, listen to you, unto you quickly and remove your candlestick which is your church he will re this is where god is coming through the churches and moving removing the candlesticks out of the place unless they accept you repent because many of the churches were were like these nicolaitans that they were the synagogue of satan they were teaching people the like the, the the nicolaitan church were teaching people to follow balaam which was for the wages that they were doing it basically they're fleecing god's sheep and they were only doing it for the wages, right? And so the Lord's saying that these seven churches and the tribulation that we are going through, even in the church right now, is him weighing uh, weighing the churches in the balance, okay? And the Lord Jesus says right here, I am walking amongst the seven golden candlesticks, meaning the seven churches. Uh, and verse 10, fear none of those things which are you shall suffer, okay? Behold, the devil, listen to this, shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. And so the Lord has shown me that that's not maybe an actual prison, but it can be like a prison quarantined into your house. You know, you can be in like a prison when you're quarantined into your house uh, against your own personal will. Okay. And so the Lord is saying, verse 11, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit 
is saying unto the churches, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And so we're going for, through a very trying time, says the Lord in the church. But the Lord said that if you uh, hold fast to those things and go back to the first things that you did, uh, come back to your first love, that the Lord is going to receive us back and that we'll have peace with God. And so the Lord has wanted us to also get back to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus do? The atonement on the cross because other people, not just believers need to hear it, but sinners are going to come to repentance um, through this virus, through this uh, tribulation. And so let's look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? We have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice at the hope of the glory of God, right? And not only so, but we glory, listen to this as us saints, in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. And so the Lord said that even though we have left, left our first love, that we're going to have peace with God anyway, because he said, I'm going to begin to shed abroad my love by the Holy Ghost which is given to us into your hearts through this tribulation, because this tribulation is going to work hope, and it's hope is going to work experience, okay? And 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 the uh, the hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is going to be shed abroad. So many have left their first love, but the Lord said that if you harden not your heart today, but you hear the voice of the Lord, that he's going to shed a supernatural love by the Holy Ghost into your heart, and you're going to begin to love the Lord like never before. This epidemic, pandemic is, is pushing you back into the arms of the Lord and through reconciliation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Lord is reconciling us back to God, okay, and bringing us back to our first love. And he also wants us not to to be worried like the world, but to enter into his rest. And many people, uh, the Lord said, are not entering into the rest of the Lord because they have right here, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, an evil heart of unbelief, okay? So we got to get away from from not believing. We have to believe. This is going to test, do we really believe, okay? And I'll get into that scripture in a minute. Uh, Romans 5 uh, and verse, um, let's go to 6. For, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, right? Uh, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man uh, some would have dared to die. But God, listen, commendeth his love. There's that love. Come on, God's trying to get us back to his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Look at that. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved from what? Wrath. Come on, through him. So the Lord said, I'm going to save you from this wrath. You you hide yourself in me, says the Lord, and you will be saved from the wrath that is coming upon the earth. Verse 10, for if when we were enemies, come on, this is what we're talking about, reconciliation back to the Father through the blood of the cross, uh, we were reconciled to God by the death of Listen to this, by the death of his son, listen to this, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by the life of the Lord. So the resurrected life. See, Jesus didn't just die, but he rose again. Okay, so when we were buried with him in baptism to be raised into eternal life with him. And so we'll have life through his life. Him being raised from the de dead and seated at the right hand of the Father who is now resurrected and glorified. That's what uh, Revelation chapter 1. So we'll have Zoe, which is the abundant life through him, right? And not only so, um, but we uh, also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received what? The atonement. Hallelujah. And so the Lord is saying that we now have received atonement. Now look at verse 17. For if by one man uh, offense death reigned by one much more, listen to this, um, us who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we'll have much more if we can receive. This is a free gift. 
We don't have to. It's a free gift of salvation. It's a free gift of grace. And grace is the power of God that worketh in us, okay? Like the Apostle Paul said, that I had this grace to do the things that I have, uh, that God has called me to do. And so this supernatural love will also bring a supernatural grace that you will be able to endure hardships as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, says the Lord. This is All this thing is doing is making you stronger. It's making your faith stronger, says the Lord. And so this is where the Lord wanted me to show you Hebrews chapter 2. Be careful, though, that lest you fall into an evil heart or unbelief. Okay? Because here's what happened. Uh, Hebrews 2, uh, 2, 2, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience reserved a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we can neglect so great a salvation, which first had begun to be spoken, listen to this, by the Lord, and was also confirmed unto us by them that heard him. That's the original apostles, right? God also bearing them witness both with what? Signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. According to his own will. Hallelujah. And so this is where the time God said there's going to be more signs, wonders, miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost are going to be poured out. And this is a time where he says, harden not your heart. Hebrews 3, look at this. For Christ as a son over his own house, which is us, right? Whose house are we if we what? Hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of a hope until the end. So we have to endure to the end to be saved. That word nikael in um, the Greek is in Revelation, I don't know how many times, uh, I think it's 20 some times, that means he who overcometh, he who endures till the end. Nikael is one who comes conquers uh, the same word like nike is to conquer to overcome because we have to hold fast our faith and our confession of our faith until the end to be saved okay this once saved always saved you know i don't have to do anything after i'm saved is a false doctrine we have to hold fast our confidence until the end we have to not fall of of and what he talks about right here of an evil heart of unbelief and so the lord has wanted me to also show you that so he's saying today Okay, here of verse 7, 3, 7, Hebrews 3, 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, uh, the, the rebellion and the day of temptation in the wilderness, where your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved, listen to this, with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Come on now. Uh, and this is what he said. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Hebrews 3, 12. Take heed, brethren, lest therefore he, there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief from departing from the living God. So he's saying, be careful not to fall away. Even though you're going through these times of trials and tribulations with this coronavirus, if anything, this is the time now to prove your faith. This is the time to prove that your, your devotion to Christ, you going, th we going through this time, if any time, because he says, verse 12, Hebrews 3, 12, but exhort one another daily. This is why we have to encourage one another daily. The Lord said, even if we're not meeting as a congregation, we can encourage each other through text online. We can pray for one another, right? He said, but exhort one another daily. This is 313, and I've been seeing 313 a lot. Hebrews 313, encourage and exhort one another daily. Why it is called today, lest any of you, listen, be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we hallelujah we are made partakers of christ listen to this if if we hold hallelujah the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end and so see that see how this is lining up with he who endures till the end right he who overcomes will i make a pillar in my house and also uh revelation look at this uh two and seven he uh that has an ear let him hear uh, what the Spirit says to church, to him that overcometh, there's that word, Nikael, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God, right? And then he goes on to say, look at uh, verse 17, 
Revelation 2.17, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So notice it's always connected to the prophetic, to hearing, right? He who has an ear, let him hear what? What the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. To him that overcometh, Nikeo, right? Overcome, conquers, will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone that uh, has a new name written upon it that only that man knows who receives it, right? My God. So these are the secrets. These are the supernatural uh, council room secrets. Uh, surely Lord God will do nothing unless he first re reveal a secret to his servants, the prophet. And so this is the prophets. When the prophets overcome or any believers overcome, that they receive the secret counsels of God. Okay, let's look a little bit further and then I'm going to get to praying for uh, real quick. Okay, but the Lord wanted me to preach the word. It's important, preachers out there. I don't care if you're a prophet and you can prophesy all day long, so can I. But the Lord said you need to get back to preaching the Bible. Okay, we've got to preach the Bible, the word of God. Just because you can prophesy, I can prophesy as everybody else can uh, that are prophets. But the Lord said we also have to be using the word of God. Okay, uh, and so people, because we have to refer people. When we're not on here, they have to know where to go. Okay, because so many people are of this synagogue of Satan where they're trying to just um, use you as a business and use you to get your money, okay? And God said that's going to stop. That's why this churches are being scattered and closed down. If we can't see that, we're blind, says the Lord, okay? So we've got to see that God is um, also allowing this to happen. Um, Hebrews 2 and um, verse uh, let's look at 14, for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself, Jesus, we got to preach Jesus. This is what Jesus did for us. I started to go out of Ephesians 2 and Colossians 2 the other day, but we got to start to preach what Christ did for us, the atonement, because many unbelievers that are listening need to know what Jesus did. We can preach the gospel of the kingdom, which is important, but we also need to be preaching the gospel of salvation because of the unbelievers that need to come to salvation, okay? And so, uh, even at, even at, this is Jesus Christ, even though now uh, we are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus Christ, also himself likewise took part, this is what he did for us, of the same, that through death, listen to this, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that's the devil. And so how did Jesus, what did Jesus even do on that cross? He destroyed death. Okay, what is this plague doing? I believe it's one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which is death. The, is the pale horse, the first horse, or the fourth horse, and the first horse, horse is pestilence okay out of the the first horse of the apocalypse and so we're seeing death but jesus took jesus took death upon himself that he might become destroy the devil who has the power of death now look at this hebrews 2 15 and deliver them that through fear of death listen to this were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And so if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can be released from the fear of death, says the Lord. So this plague won't even bother you because you will know if you die, you go straight into God's glory, okay? So you don't even have to worry about death. If you accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, if you return to your first love, you won't even have to worry about death, says the Lord, okay? Hebrews 2 and verse 16, for verily, uh, he took Jesus on him the the nature of not the nature of angels but he took on him the nature of Abraham of men okay wherefore in all things it behooved him uh, to be made also like his brother and like us that he might listen be a merciful and faithful high priest in things uh, pertaining to God to make there's that word again reconciliation for the sins of the people for it uh in that he himself has uh suffered being tempted he is also able to succor us who are being tempted this is what jesus is doing for us right now okay and then when you keep on going over to hebrews 4 this is the rest the lord wants us to enter right let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you 
should seem to fall short of entering into his rest. Hebrews 4, I want you to read this whole chapter. For unto us was the gospel preached, this is a difference, as well as unto them, but the word, listen to this, preached, was, did not profit them. Why not? Because it was not being mixed with faith to them that heard it. Okay, so you have to have faith. And this is what the Lord said, that many are departing from the Lord from an evil heart of unbelief. And the only thing, you know, there is people that got healed in the Bible, even that, that just had low faith because they said, Lord, help my uh, unbelief. So it was never by their faith. You know, it, it, even though he said, your faith has made you whole, he would still heal people that had little faith. But he says that people that have unbelief or no faith never get anything from God. That's why it didn't profit these people because it was not mixed with faith. Uh, that when they heard the gospel preached. And for we, listen to this, which have believed do enter into the rest, as he said, that I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, and therefore uh, go down to Hebrews 4 and 8, for Jesus has given them rest. So you can rest in Jesus that, okay, that would he not have afterward have spoken of another day. Verse 9, there remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God, right, for us. For he that is entered into the rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God also ceased from his. Let us therefore, come on, labor therefore to enter into his rest, lest any of you fall after the same example of unbelief, right? Because this is where the Lord said that that's what happened to the children of Israel in the desert, okay? And this is what he said. He was grieved with that generation. I don't want him to be aggrieved with this generation because the Lord showed me yesterday. I woke up last night and, it, and my Bible was right there on uh, Luke 17. And he said that this Luke 17 is talking about they were eating and drinking until uh, the flood came upon Noah. And as is the days of the Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And so people are going to be going about their own way. And all of a sudden, it said, then all of a sudden there was two men in one bed. And one was taken. There were two uh, women next to each other in the field. And one was taken. So it came on them very surprisingly. Okay, everybody was doing what they thought they uh, what they should be doing like like they are now just doing their own thing because oh we've got to preserve ourselves because of this epidemic but the Lord said he could come back at any minute as the lightning flashes from the west to the east right so is the coming of the son of man and so Hebrews uh, let me look at this 5 15 or 4 15 for we have not a high priest Jesus Christ which cannot be touched with the feeling notice he can even be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all uh, points tempted like as we were, yet without sin. That's why he can he can relieve us of our sin or our fear of sin or our fear of death. And then he says in 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us What in this time of need. Thank you, Father, for that word. I thank you that you're reconciling us back to you, Father, even through this trial and trip tribulation that we're going through Romans chapter 5 father we pray for your mercy right now on every person that's on this line God I pray uh, that you just reconcile us back to you Lord I pray that you bring us back to our first love God I pray father that you remove the evil heart of unbelief uh, in people I pray I bind up that uh, Luciferian antichrist type spirit that evil heart of unbelief I command it to loose your people right now come out from the midst of them come out from the churches that synag those synagogues of Satan, God, I pray you send your warfare and angels to clean out that synagogue of Satan in the churches, even now while people are being scattered abroad, Lord. We pray for your mercy and grace, Lord, for your people as we go through this time of panic, but we also know that it's a great time of reconciliation, a great time of harvest, a great time to bring revival uh, to not only the church, but to the nation, says the Lord. And so this is a great harvest time, a time of revival, this is even though like 1 Peter chapter 1 that the Christians in the first were being scattered abroad throughout the land but the Lord said even as we are being scattered abroad throughout the land because the churches aren't even meeting a lot of them right now the Lord said that this is so we can get out just like the prophetic word was for March that we needed to get out and start 
going out into the marketplaces, into the streets, into the highways and byways. And this is what I hear the Lord saying. It is time that scripture that he said, I'm going to send them out into the highways and byways uh, to get the lame and the poor and the needy. And notice God is showing me that the, that it is because a lot of people are all about this prosperity gospel. They're all trying to help everybody that has money. But what about the poor and needy, says the Lord? You, you know, the church has left the poor and needy and they are the people that need help those that the widow and the orphan and the fatherless and so God said we got to get back to helping the poor and needy to feeding the homeless to making outreach ministries to get out into the highways and byways and preach the gospel not only the gospel of the kingdom but the gospel of salvation to bring people to Christ because Christ is the door I am the way the truth and the life said the Lord no man comes to the father but by me and then when we can get him to the door of salvation then you can bring him into the kingdom right the gospel of the kingdom but that gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached uh you know uh repentance for us first matthew 3 16 uh says bring forth you uh um fruits that are meat for repentance and so he was even telling the pharisees that you have to bring uh fruits meat for repentance and they were already supposed to have god right and then he also went on and told the uh his disciples the same thing and and he said it is time to repent and the kingdom of heaven is at hand and then he went on to say right there in luke 17 where i was just at today uh that the lord just opened that up from last night i just got up this morning and there it was right uh, and then he said you know he told them that they're gonna have to be watching and praying and that also the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, quit looking for it here, there, and everywhere else. But the kingdom of God is within you. He said, it's already among you. And so we that's why we pray that kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so God is shedding abroad his, uh, his love into the heart by the Holy Ghost. And he's bringing the love and reconciliation even in our hearts. And it's going to bring back the joy. Uh, and Romans 5, 17, but by receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ, says the Lord. And so when that love, when we come back to our first love, we'll be able to go preach the gospel and bring others, even around us, the Lord said. Many people around us, uh, the Lord said, need to hear the gospel. Many people around us uh, need to be prayed for. Uh, even I had a friend that looked like he, he had a respiratory problem, uh, problem. He was a pastor and it looked like he caught the coronavirus and so the lord had me pray for him i rebuked that disease it cut he coughed it up out of his throat and i believe he got delivered from it and so i was able you know to pray healing through the power of the holy ghost and so no it's the holy ghost if 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 deliverance is um if i cast out a demon it is by the spirit or the finger of god and so it is by the power of the holy ghost that we can cast demons out and so the lord said that many people on this line that you're going to just uh, uh, get hands-on training for deliverance all of a sudden if you've never cast out a devil the lord said there's going to be somebody around you that he'll even uh say go over there and cast that demon out of him and then heal that person and so we're going to see just like the lord showed me that it was through many signs wonders and gifts of the holy ghost according to hebrews 2, 2 hallelujah and 4 god also bearing witness hallelujah both with signs and wonders and with diverse gifts of the holy ghost according to his what own will and so god said ephesians 1 and 11 that god works all things after the counsel of his own will but i hear the lord saying that the will of god right now is for miracle signs and wonders and gifts of the holy ghost to be shed abroad and the love of god is to be shed in our heart and we're to come back to christ we're to come be pushed back into his arms we're be coming back to our first love the lord said and we're also to enter into the rest of the lord okay enter back into my rest don't listen to that hype out there and all that control and the lord also wants me to pray i pray that you that they'll get delivered from that antichrist spirit of control that is in the media uh in the government that is trying to control your people god i break it right now and i cancel it by the fire of the holy ghost i pray the spirit of burning and judgment according to isaiah 4 4 will come upon all 
all the wicked works and I come against every evil heart of unbelief that would keep people that would keep people um, from coming to the Lord that keeps them from falling away I come against the synagogue of Satan and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans against the doctrine of, of Balaam and even all over there to the spirit of Jezebel in chapter 2 Revelation 2 and so these are the spirits that are coming up against us the Antichrist spirit also first John chapter 2 uh, that antichrist spirit which is already at work in the world and so the Lord said if you can overcome Jezebel uh, Revelation 2 and 20 look at this I want to show you if this is also going to help the church come over and overcome uh, which is that Nikael that word the same used word conquer they use for Nike right okay look at this this is what God will give you once you overcome Jezebel and all the works of the Nicolaitans and the synagogue of Satan Go ahead and go to Revelation 2.26. Let's start at 2.25. But uh, that which you have uh, hold fast until I come. And so the Lord is saying, verse 25, Revelation 2.25, hold fast to that which went which you have until I come, says the Lord. Verse 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works, listen, to until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. That word is not just dunamis power, but exosia, authority over the nations. And so the Lord said, if you come over and beat this Jezebel spirit and this synagogue of Satan, this uh, doctrine of Balaam in your church, that literally, because it says right here, verse 24, that you have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. And so notice a lot of these people have fallen. Thyatira, like the Thyatira church, uh, they had known this, was not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan. And so that, that those churches that have fallen uh, into the depths of Satan may not be able to come back. But we who overcome, listen to that. He says, if you can overcome that, I will give you exosia, meaning supernatural government power over not only just your regional territory, but the nations of God. Okay, so verse 26, verse 27, and he or you shall rule them with a rod of iron as with a vessel's potter shall they be broken in shivers even as I received of my father. So the Lord is, Jesus is is saying even as I received of my father because I overcame all you who overcome will also receive power supernatural power not only over the principalities and powers rulers and dominions in your regional area but you will receive power over the nations and so the Lord is saying many of you have had prophecies that you will literally go to nations or you will be prophets or apostles to the nations and the Lord said uh, this is actually going to be the catalyst to push your prophecy to come to pass says the Lord. And so you literally, once you overcome in this pandemic, the Lord said that you will be brought into the power over the nations. And the Lord also showed me um, over there in Matthew, uh, verse, in Matthew 12, that uh, uh, he showed me over there in Matthew 12, that a kingdom uh, that is divided against itself or a city or a house divided against itself cannot stand. And so the Lord showed me in that, that there are people in one house, just like it said in Matthew 17, when he comes back, or Luke 17, Matthew 24, that many of you have not been able to get victory because there are unbelievers in your house and there's a spirit of Antichrist even in your own house. And Jesus himself said that a house divided by itself or a city divided by itself or a church divided by itself cannot stand or it will be brought to desolation. And so the Lord showed me in a vision today and showed me prophetically that many have not been able to get victory which is the same word for Nikael overcome victory right that you have not been able to get victory uh, because you're in a house that is divided or a city now notice he said also a city and so I've seen many cities the Lord showed me that have been divided that they have not been able to bring revival to that city for years and years and they've been praying and fasting for it and the same with certain churches but it's because your church or your city or your house is divided says the Lord and so you may have to even move God said I will maybe even be moving some people in this time says the Lord so you can even get your own place um, because if you're continuing to live with an unbeliever or with the, the antichrist or with the devil himself or a luciferian spirit your house will 
be brought to desolation, says the Lord, and it may not be able to stand. And so I, I just hear this now that the Lord may be moving people uh, in this time, even from a different city, because he said certain cities would not be able to stand also, and that they will be also brought to desolation because they're divided. And so the Lord said that be uh, on the lookout because he's going to be speaking to people also about making certain moves during this time. And so I prophesy that right now in Jesus' name. And so be be on the lookout for what God is saying to you. And um, I'll be also coming out more often. I'm not going to prophesy personally on this, but I'm going to be coming out. This is just for the public, this, this message. But I'm going to be coming out into the group really soon and doing um, just praying and prophesying over people that are in the group okay and uh, so the god just wanted me to release this um, overall message and to tell you that even as the lord showed me that prophetic parallel with that antivirus that came into my computer where it was it was just a program that would help uh, rid it of an antivirus but how did it take over my whole computer unless i pushed on it it was a spirit of control the lord said because the, i've never gave them permission okay and so the lord said that that's also how this government and the media is just pushing uh by control to get into our lives okay and to influence us by because they should never have been able to put that in my computer because unless you pay 1995 that's a spirit of control and that's an antichrist spirit and that's exactly what the mark of the b666 will be is they'll cause you to have to get a chip to buy or sell okay and then they're already looking to go to a cashless society because they say oh the the money uh the coronavirus got onto the money okay and so notice this this is could be a setup uh for the antichrist right and so the lord had also said either you're going to trust in man or in this time or you're going to trust in me says the lord blessed is the man uh, that trusts not in man but he trusts in the lord jeremiah 17 okay in this time the lord said blessed is the man or woman that trusts not in man but trusts in the lord and i want you to read that whole chapter of jeremiah 17 and so also go over those scriptures. I'll try to put up all those scriptures I went through in Hebrews. Um, but I wanted to pop that message out and get it out to people. And I wanted to pray uh, against this uh, evil heart of unbelief that so people can receive the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I also wanted to pray against a spirit of control and this antichrist spirit. And so I thank you, Father, um, for this message. And I pray you loose your angels around your people right now. God, you protect them. I call a wall of fire all around them right now, according to Zechariah 2 and 5 and let you lord be the glory in the midst of them father i thank you for and protect everyone especially those who are in uh, my group and that are um, my sons and daughters lord as i you have told me to cover them during this time and so all you that follow me the lord said that i will be covering you during this time so if you don't have a pastor uh don't worry about that because i'm going to be praying for you i've been doing one-on-ones about two a day and so the lord said i will also you know get a hold of some of you guys to do one-on-one ones um, and so um, just know that those are in the group and those that follow me I'll cover you I'm praying for you I've actually went down the whole list of every 61 62 people in the group uh, yesterday and I prayed personally for for each person so just because I don't pray for you live like the last prayer doesn't mean I'm not praying for you, okay? I'm still praying for you. And so other people that, I, that I'm going to do on one-on-one, -on -one, one tonight at 5 o'clock, and I'll be setting up some others. So if I if the Lord tells me to do a one-on-one -on -one with you, I'll send you an email, okay? But I'm also going to be coming live in the, the discipleship group, uh, Birth into the Spirit and the Kingdom of Disciples, and I'll be praying for the disciples that the Lord has given me uh, to teach and to cover uh, and so we'll see you guys, um, you know, be looking, I'll be putting posts out so that you will know the times, uh, also. And so father, we thank you. I seal this word in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, God, for everyone. I pray that you just break that spirit of fear because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and of a sound mind, God. And I thank you that you're shedding abroad, uh, in their hearts by the Holy Ghost, uh, that love of God, according to Romans 5 and 5. And so we thank you, God, that we reign in life, Romans 5, 17, by the abundance of grace and of the gift. Notice it's a free gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. We shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And so we thank you, Jesus, and we give you, Father, all the glory, praise, and honor in the Lord Jesus' name. And so the Lord Jesus bless you guys. Have a good day. I'll talk to you really soon in Jesus' name.
God bless.